Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23 and this time we need to put some communication satellites up. Now the wonderful thing about communication satellites is that you don't need to bring them back down. Actually first before I do anything else I should probably save this launcher shouldn't I? Um, so yeah let's let's bring it in here and I've decided to go with non-greco-roman gods and goddesses of course and uh, for this one I've uh, gone Norse I think I'll go Norse for a lot of them and so we're going to be going with the Dellinger Launcher and uh, Dellinger is the god of dawn so in the Norse system and I think there's there there's at least one uh, British last name English last name that comes from the name of this particular god so yep uh, let's say I think 1.5 tons to LEO is about right for this launcher all right so let's just let hang out there we can ditch the heat shield because it's not coming back down we can ditch the parachutes since we don't need to worry about re-entry heat, we can move the RCS ports to a more suitable location. Uh, probably... Actually, let's let them hang out and reposition everything else, too. Okay. So, what do we need on here? Well, I'm gonna want MechJeb. Just for my displays and solar panels are a must actually we need a lot more solar panels don't we hmm yeah so bigger tank and more solar panels I think that's gonna be important if we wanna use this as a communication satellite Batteries. What kind of batteries do we have? It looks like we just have this one. Hmm. Okay, well let's let's get four of those then. Right at the bottom. And solar panels. Where did I leave that? I'll just pick a new one up. Okay, so I think uh, electric panel wise we should be okay. As long as we turn the right way and not point at the sun or anything like that. Uh, actually, let's uh, slap a single solar panel to the top just to cover that eventuality. Uh, that doesn't look good. Alright, well we don't need these sorts of antennas. We need, well let's say uh, two rabbit ears. Um, Let's put it on again since two rabbit ears. These have a range of 25,000 kilometers, which is a little bit more than halfway around the world. So there shouldn't be any problem in terms of uh, if, if as long as something is in the line of sight with them, they should be able to communicate. So no problem there. I don't need to go all the way up to this one. And you can see why I wouldn't want to. This one is 0.5 tons. And while it would fit, that is a mass I don't need to be adding. What's the mass of this thing right now? 0.6. So this whole thing is 0.6. And I'm going to add a 0.5 ton antenna? No, I don't think so. Let's uh, make sure that we're all fueled up. Yeah, it looks like it. So uh, even with all that fuel, all that hydrazine for the RCS ports, we're still only 0.6 tons. Um, is there anything I'm forgetting? We could put these, but you know what, maybe for future reasons we should get one of these. These are capable of communicating with the moon. so. Maybe I, I don't want to constantly be pulling satellites up and down. Now, of course, uh, we can deorbit this, and that's why I've got all the hydrazine uh, because it not only can reposition but deorbit. But this doesn't look very good, does it? No, I'm gonna keep these the cute ones in 
low Earth orbit, low core, well, low Earth orbit. Uh, this is nothing like Kerbin orbit. So, so yeah, I think this is it, right? Is there anything else I might need? Got tons of RCS and everything. We've got, I mean, you can see why I put 1.5 tons. We've got way more, way more than we need to get to any low or low orbit. And we're not going to go for a low orbit. We're going to go for a high orbit, obviously. I mean, why would we put this in a low, really low orbit? But we can't go for geostationary, I don't think. That would take too much, and it would take other communication apparatus besides. You see, um, geosync or geostationary orbit around Earth is... 32,000 kilometers or thereabouts and that's that's a ways away that's a ways away and uh, once you get there in order to circularize you need to burn like a thousand five hundred meters per second and that uh, first of all that requires communication we have to be able to communicate with it when it's at its apoapsis in order to circularize so that's the problem and another problem is I mean, we might have enough to circularize. I think we probably need a thousand two hundred minimum to get to geostationary, and that would be cutting it close. So we're not going to go to geostationary. We're gonna go short of that. Okay, so this is going to be uh, well, TDRS. I guess that's what it is. It's the tracking and delay uh, data relay satellite. And uh, I'm going to name the satellites, uh, instead of numbering them or putting letters like I did before, I think I'm going to name them after the ground tracking stations that were used during the shuttle launches. And so the first ground tracking station was Bermuda. So this is TDRS Bermuda. And then we'll rename them as we go along. Okay, uh, staging needs some work. Now I put new antennas on it, so I need to make sure that they're action grouped. And this one should still be the second stage antenna. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, that's that. Looks like all the staging is still fine. And well, uh, we've got a lot of satellites to launch, so let's get to it. And what we want to do is launch them in the same period. But I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, well, you probably can guess what I mean by that, but I'll show you how I do it uh, once we get out there. Okay, so here we are, and we're aiming for, let's say, 2,000 kilometers. I think is fair. Alright, SAS is on, throttle is up, and let's just go. So one thing I need to do quicker, okay I don't need kerosene on, uh, quicker rather than sooner is to add something to my custom info window settings probably. Nope. There, I thought there was a custom info window editor here. Is that not in, that, there are a lot of mechjeb things and I don't know I don't know how to edit my custom info window how do you edit? anyway uh, I guess we can go with orbit info and keep that off to the side okay off and we can start our turn a bit Uh, G-forces are going up. I hope this is a heavy enough payload to make sure that the G-forces don't go too high. Remember, I've dropped the heat shield. So, that, that heat shield was quite heavy. And it might be that this is too light right now. And that the G-forces will go out of bounds. In which case, I just need to shut off the first stage early.
Okay, that's fine. And on we go. Let's have the Commutron on this stage extended. Good. Gotta preemptively extend the ones on the top stage and they're sort of poking out of their fairing. Not quite good, but whatever. Forget if I get to throttle this engine. Let's see. Uh, nope, this is not a. Th oh no! I mean, how can I check with that thing down? Why? Why can I only control it when? Yeah, there's no throttle on here. Okay, I'm gonna go for a three-hour orbital period. So whatever that gets us to, that gets us to. Okay, three hours and three minutes. Okay. Now... Now life is interesting. Apoapsis is pretty high. So, so like that. So it's gonna give good coverage on this side. And then it'll be too quick over on this side to give very good coverage. So that's interesting. I don't like three hours and three minutes though. But since I can't throw all this engine, this is not the way to fix that. Oh. Alright, let's dump this at this stage. And yes, our satellite is free. So let's do some fixing, shall we? And first of all, let's uh, pull it back so that our uh, oral period is... Maybe I sh I mean, I don't think I should circularize. Let's just get our orbital period to three hours uh, as exactly as possible. Okay, there you go. A uh, three hour orbital period. That's pretty good. I think uh, that's fine. Now what's our power draw like? Are these guys really recharging this thing? I mean these Commutron 16s don't take much power, right? They only take 0 0.01 charge per second. This... These should be giving enough to cover that. Direct sunlight. And then there's panels on the other side. Well, let's uh, rotate a little bit. Uh, okay, stop turning. Uh, like this. Okay, I think that's fine. Yeah, okay. So let's put a few more up then. And uh, but we let's 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 go to map mode. Let's say we have it make a full round first and then wherever the planet is after that, we'll uh, send another one up. Okay. So maybe two would be better. I only uh, let let's just put four up. Let's just put four up. So that means twenty-four hours. L let's have it make two rounds, and that'll be uh, six hours. Actually, we can go with this. I'll give myself five minutes to get the new one on the launch pad and everything. Okay, let's go to the VAB and get a new one up.
Okay, so the next ground tracking station would have been Madrid. So there we go, TDRS Madrid, and let's get this to a launch pad. Okay, so because I have so little control over the the thrust and uh, and of course the burn time because I can't relight them, uh, I can relight the second stage one more time, but that's it. Um, I'm not aiming for the same apoapsis and periapsis as long as I get to the same orbital period, I'm going to be satisfied with that. Also, it's important that the apoapsis is insanely high, of course. Uh, uh, I guess around 8 kilometers would be fine. So, alright, SAS is on, throttle is up. It's a nighttime launch, but we're going to have probably two of those, so let's just get going. Alright, everything looks good. And since things are going to get pretty dark and we're not going to be able to see this rocket pretty very well, um, I'll probably see you later in the whole launch phase. Unless something goes wrong. I should point out that this is not going to be a full coverage system here. Uh, there, there's going to be significant gaps, especially when the t the satellites aren't talking to each other. Um, after all, uh, one throughout the uh, time, one will be above the KSC, uh, or at least able to talk to the KSC. That that's pretty much for sure. The question is whether the other three can talk to it, and that's not not necessarily the case if they're in arbitrary apoapsis and periapsis. Um, they might be in the very, very odd portions of their orbit and unable to talk to each other. And in that case, it's possible that we will still lose contact. So it's not a, it's not a perfect system. It's certainly not uh, suitable for anything that's going to go into a polar orbit. That's, that's out of the question. So, and there's going to be gaps. There's going to be gaps. However, what is true is that once we put some higher satellites like geostationary and stuff like that, these will still be useful. So that's one good thing. These will still help smooth out the possible gaps in that system. Okay, engaging antenna 1 and the ones at the top can't really... okay well the ones at the top are sort of poking out yeah they're poking out actually this launch system I should test how much it can actually carry up because I think it can carry up more than 1.5 tons given the, given the way it's going right now Maybe close though. I've been taking a look at that. Two tons right there. Eh, maybe, maybe not. Okay, again, looking for orbital period of three hours. And as long as we get close to that, I'll shut it off. Okay, three hours, two minutes. Let's just do the same thing that we did last time. Okay, use RCS to pull away. Now, let's orient properly. And slow down a bit in order to get our orbital period to what we want it to be. We are leaving quite a lot of space debris. And let's face it, if you're going to put a communication satellite system up, you might end up with a little bit of a issue with that sort of thing. Alright, three hours. Let's see how the two orbits look together. Let me just make sure. Okay, the rabbit ears are out. Uh, yeah. Okay. Not quite 90 degrees from each other. Not bad though.
Okay, that loses communication. That gains communication, and this is going through that. Okay, that's good. That's not bad. Okay, uh, let's have it do it's six hours, or maybe a little bit less than that, judging from the angles. But let's just go with six hours for now. Okay, and give me five minutes to finish up everything. All right, so let's uh, go back to the VAB and try and launch another one. Now, honestly, the next one has a really weird name. The I mean, I have no idea where this is. Urag D T D R S Uragadi. Okay, whatever they say. I'm I'm actually. Uh, looking at the transcript of the first space shuttle launch and the next station was Uragadi so okay uh, or is it uh, Uragadi okay let's get an A in there alright on to launch pad now you might go well all these launches are so repetitive and uh, annoying that way but uh, we're also doing something that we need to do anyway which is a Kerbal rating our uh, rockets and of course this is not going to be Kerbal rated uh, because <laughs> the G-forces get up to 15 at the high end and I don't think we want to put any Kerbals on it but we're at least establishing a safety record here and so far it's a, it's a pretty good safety record and um, this, this is going to be uh, a decent launch system hopefully and a reliable one we can always uh, toss a rocket uh, toss a payload up with this rocket and we can uh, be sure that the payload will get to its its orbit though I do need to work out exactly what orbit did actually I mean, it looks like it's ending up in a very uh, interesting orbit certainly not a circular orbit but that will depend on the payload as well Okay. Antennae out. Yep, poking through. Very good. So uh, somebody suggested uh, using uh, KOS, the Kerbal Operating System, to program the rockets, and that's a nifty idea. I need to... I've got it installed in this install, so I had planned to do that sort of thing. And it's, it's worth doing some, uh, some tutorials on it because it's a difficult thing to use. But it, I still have to get the hang of it, really. Um, there's a lot of weird quirks in it that uh, I have to iron out. So, I mean, I I just barely got onto how to save my programs into uh, the volumes and stuff like that. So, until to run the program. Um, yeah, th there's especially a quirk with the staging that I'm I'm not entirely sure about that I need to figure out. Uh, and that's the quirk where if you light the rockets and then you need to stage in order to release the launch clamps if you want to do that in separate stages. I still have trouble with that for some reason. And there are other things. I mean that's just a simple thing. But uh, getting all the angles right is tricky business sometimes. And of course you have to write a new program for each rocket if you really want to operate it efficiently. Not that I'm operating this one efficiently, I seem to be uh, aiming at whatever angle I please, but that's because we have a surplus of, uh, of uh, delta V on this one. But the key thing is that if you have uh, KOS, uh, an onboard program, then you can tell it to pop the parachutes whenever you like. Okay, uh, three hours, three minutes, and let's just uh, decouple. RCS, push away. 
All right, and let us tilt in the right direction and see that we're not in the way of anything. Yeah, we're clear. All right, so let's fix our orbital period. I sure hope these guys have enough electric charge to do their business. I'll have to check up on them after they go around a few times. Okay, three hours. So how does it look? Yep, definitely starting to look like a communication sort of thing. These guys are totally out of position though. Actually, uh, right now, uh, <laughs> the communication system would fail miserably. Um, <laughs> But that that that's that's the problem I was saying. It's not a this is not a complete coverage system. Uh, even though you might think it looks like one, it does. It isn't one. Right now it's looking good though. But then, right there, fail. And even if we add another one over here, it'd fail. And now it's just complete failure. So, so yeah, I mean, this is the best I'm doing right now, and it'll probably save us a few times. And actually, I should be able to figure out when it would be able to save us. You know, putting one into polar orbit might might do the trick. No, uh, I don't know. Oh, I've passed time. Darn it. I was only supposed to go six hours. So what we're going to do is go 30 hours. Right. Ooh, don't look at that. Okay, one day and six hours. So it's like when they're about to get to their uh, apoapses, it all uh, it all looks nice and connected. Well, except right now something is. Why isn't this connected? She looks like it has a connection line. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, electric charge. Here we go. Huh. Where's our sun? pointing directly at it. No, I mean these should be receiving some. Yeah, direct sunlight. Is it's... I mean, well, we've got 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. These require 0 0.01. Just give it some time here. Maybe I should just have one of these out, but am I gonna get regain connection at all? Aye. So should I even bother to put another satellite up if it's gonna be like this? Oh, it's going into the dark now. Let me switch to one of the other ones and see what their situation is. If it's the same thing, then I guess this whole thing is a botch. Okay, well this one seems okay for uh, for energy. Let me just ditch one of its antennae. Oh, no, con no connection. Huh. 
Hmm. All right, well, we can't do that here. Let's check out Bermuda. Now this one is clearly over the KSC, so we've got electric charge, but not as much as I would like. And that's probably because its butt end is pointing at the sun. That's not the right way to go. Possibly I should orient north-south. Not, uh, yeah, north-south, right? Uh, let's, let's point north. Oh darn, our orbital period is changing like all sorts of ways. The RCS is too strong. Uh, oh well, let's point north-south first and then fix that. Okay. And if it's going this way around... Ah, I can't figure that out. Okay, so now that we're like this... I don't think it'd help actually, north-south or prograde, retrograde. Um, let's just point a little bit more like this ways. Okay, now let's fix the orbital period. Okay, right about there. Hmm. Is it recharging? Okay, it is recharging. But let me drop one of the antennae to uh, make sure that it does. I think just one of these should be able to communicate with more than one target, hopefully. Well, we gotta find out. Alright, uh, nothing for it. I think what I should do is just launch the last one and then work out the issues with this later. So let's let's get the final TDRS set up. Maybe uh, time up a little bit. Eventually the one that's lost electric charge should end up in a place where it can regain it. But uh, I'm gonna have to figure out where that might be. All right. Okay, and our final one is a rural valley. Believe it or not, I have no idea where a rural valley is. Uh, I hope it's a nice place. But uh, yeah. All right. Uh, launch pad time. Okay, daytime again. I'm a bit worried about the whole electric charge situation, but. Let's just get this thing done. Right, SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. So after this, um, however this works out, I'm going to try and do that experiment that I wasn't able to do before, but also I think I should buy the technology that has the gravioli detector and try that out and so we'd, we're gonna do some gravioli experiments so the the biological samples from uh, from space that's a hundred points and then whatever gravioli experiments we can do now so what the system that we've got here probably gives us a three hour window what well, not a three hour window yeah no, a, 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 an hour and a half window, let's say. An hour and a half window to two hour window for launches. If all of them are communicating properly with each other. Now when you think about an hour and a half to two hour window for launches, that means that, you know, I, that's the entire orbit, right? I mean, uh, as long as you're launching to low Earth orbit, that means that you could get around the entire world in that time. Um, so... So we'll be able to get our orbits exactly the way we want them to be, and then, and then bring them back down properly, as long as we start at the beginning of the window, we'll be able to uh, get it down wherever we want it and communicate with it so that we can engage the parachutes. So that's the idea, that's the plan. 
if everything has electric charge. Of course, uh, if it doesn't have electric charge, then plan doesn't work. Okay, we don't need to be pointing down yet. Okay, check that. Yep, we've got uh, antennae. Hmm, I'm actually keeping this one a little bit low on the apoapsis. Let me let me lift that up a bit. Okay, three hours and two minutes. And I hope none of my uh, satellites actually ended up with a periapsis in the atmosphere. I think I've got them all out. All right, anyway, uh, yep, let's just do what we do. Okay. Um, though we could use a bit of a... Well, it's not oriented badly right now. Maybe a little bit of a flattening will suffice. And I guess I'll retract one antenna. Just to be sure. Okay, and let's take off SAS. There's no need for that. All right, so obviously this satellite has connection, but nothing else does. But everything is, uh, see they're all uh, at their periapses right now. If we expand out, let's see what the loose link is when they all reach their peaks. Well, this one isn't even. Uh, see, this Yagerty is y Yaragerty is <laughs> what a funny name. Uh, apologies to anybody who lives there, but um, that's the loose link here, and that's because it's not got electric charge. See here now, they're fine, but that's actually thanks to Stay Putnik Five. Wow. Now let's time it. So it basically got on at uh, 110. Uh, well, now this satellite. Oh no, this satellite still has it. It's fine. Uh, this it should be. It should except for this. Except for the Uragity side, it should be fine. So 110, and let's see how long it takes for them to drop off. Yeah, so an hour and a half-ish is what we're talking about. And let me just take a peek at what Uragity is going on with. So here's our problem satellite. And the others might be a problem too if I don't, uh, if I don't uh, treat them carefully. But it beats me why it's not recharging at all. Let's see. So I'll have to pay attention to the others to make sure that they do stay with electric charge. But this one has only been up for a day and already lost all charge. Well, let's see. Now, yeah, I mean, obviously it's oriented badly. But this, this panel says direct sunlight. Energy flow and everything. It's even uh, warming up. So, let's see now. Oh, I wish I could turn it. All right, so, I'm thinking about whether I need to launch another one in this orbit, but uh, let, let's hold off for now, and we'll deal with this, and we're going to try and use this system minus this one side in order to launch our next missions in the next episode, alright?
So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please don't tell me about a whole bunch of uh, other kinds of orbits that might be interesting. No Molnia orbit conversations, please. Okay, I understand that these are not standard satellite orbits. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, so other suggestions are welcome. And uh, yeah, see you next time.